Hey guys, Dr. Dilipin and this is CM Weekly Case of the Week series and we are into episode 14 and as a tradition we have to discuss ECG this time because last week we have discussed an interesting hematology case and this ECG is actually a killer ECG, one of my personal favorites because it tells you so much of information and you people are going to get a lot of insights out of this ECG. Let us move on to the ECG, you have a 74 year old man posted for total knee arthroplasty. He had a coronary artery bypass grafting one year prior and he is currently on digoxin, last six, rosvastatin, olmesartan and aspirin. So because of the history of bypass graft, I can say probably the patient is having coronary artery disease and uh, his treatment with aspirin also tells you that the patient is having coronary artery disease and digoxin last six is also there in the patient's medication list. So it also tells you the fact that the patient might be having heart failure also. So patient is likely to have a lot of structural heart disease that much I can infer from the given data, from the given history preoperatively and let us have a look at the ECG. So there are some weird things happening in the ECG. You can see there are some runs of white complex tachycardia. I don't know whether it's a VT or a SVT with aberrancy, but in the setting of a coronary artery disease, in the setting of heart failure, so in any structural heart disease, that to an elderly individual like 74 years of age, I'm going to take this runs of white complex tachycardia as a ventricular tachycardia unless proved otherwise. That's a very, very, very strong predictor, the history itself. Heart failure, ischemic heart disease, any structural heart disease for that matters. That to an old individual, the white complex tachycardia must be a VT unless proved otherwise, right? So let me take it as a VT as of now, but let, let us look at the other areas of the ECG. There are some areas of the ECG where the rhythm looks okay coming from the sinus node. So, and yes, it is. And I'm going to look at V1 where I can see the P waves very nicely. And you look at these P waves, they are basically sinus P waves. They are nice and tight. Looking nicely biphasic, you know why it is biphasic in V1. So one of the deflections is going to come from the right atrium, another deflection is going to come from the left atrium. So it's going to be biphasic in V1. So it's basically a sinus P wave, and I have absolutely no doubt about that. So this must be a sinus P wave. 